I'm about to tell you that the very best performing students tend to study for about students who make it a point to learn material in isolation, then bring that material to other students in the same course and teach them perform exceedingly well in comparison to the other students. Most of the effect, it appears, of being a better student can be attributed to these top five or six habits. I know a lot of you out there who want to learn and want to come up with the best studying strategies are trying to think about how to structure your day or how much to study or when to study. Let's get the most important things out of the way first. Neuroplasticity and learning, that is converting your studying efforts into retention of knowledge is a two-step process. You've probably heard about active engagement. That's just a fancy set of words for focus for really attending to the information that you're trying to learn. And it is very important anytime you're trying to learn new information. So focus goes with alertness. You can't be focused if you're not alert. This is prerequisite. So you need to be alert and you need to be focused in order to pay attention to the information that you're trying to learn. In fact, it is the process of being focused and attending that cues your nervous system that something is important, that something's different about whatever sensory experience you happen to be having when you're focused and attending, whether or not it's the information you're hearing or that you're looking at or both. That cue at the level of neurochemicals in your brain and body signals to the neurons, hey, you're going to have to change. You're going to have to alter your connections, either make them stronger or weaker or a combination of those things in order to make sure that your nervous system can retain and use the information at a future time. So that's step one. And of course, as a part of step one, most people, when they hear about optimal studying strategies, they wanna know, you know, what should they do? What should they take in order to learn better? Well, here's what everyone should take in order to learn better, which is a great night's sleep the night before, limiting your external stress. Although some stress is good because it cues up your alertness. It actually allows you to remember certain things better. We'll talk about this a little bit later. No one can remove all stress from their life, but we know one thing for sure, your ability to be alert and focused is going to be greater if you slept well the night before. Okay, so sleep is without question the best nootropic, right? The word nootropic means smart drug. I don't really like that term because learning involves all sorts of things. It's not just about being smart, it's about being able to attend. It's about sometimes being creative, flexible with ideas and information. Here's the point. You're going to need to get your sleep right in order to be able to study and learn at your absolute best. Now let's talk about how the best students structure their days. Turns out there are great studies on this. There's a really nice paper, in fact, that surveyed close to 700 students. These were medical students, approximately equal number of male and female students, and analyzed the most useful learning habits. That is, the learning habits associated with the most successful students. Now, anytime you do a study like this where people take surveys, there's always the issue of causality. In fact, we can pretty much set aside any possible causality. For instance, I'm about to tell you that the very best performing students tend to study for about three or four hours per day. But you could easily say, well, they're the best students because they study three or four hours per day. They don't study three or four hours per day because they're the best students. And you'd be exactly right. Okay. We can get into all sorts of discussions about correlation versus causation, about reverse causality, and on and on. However, none of that is the point here. The point here is to establish what are the habits that the most successful students seem to incorporate over and over again, regardless of what classes they're taking, regardless of where they are in their arc of their learning trajectory. And so what we know based on this study, and I'll provide a link to it in the show note captions, is that there are at least 10 study habits that the highly effective students use. I'm gonna focus on the top five or six, just for sake of time, because it turns out that most of the effect, it appears, of being a better student can be attributed to these top five or six habits. First of all, they set aside time to study. They literally schedule time to study. Now this probably serves several roles. The first one is that they are able to clear out other distractions, and in fact, that's the second thing that they do, they are very effective or they make it a point of putting their phone away and off, of isolating themselves, that's right, they're not studying with other people, they study alone, which is not to say that people who study with others cannot be effective in their studying, but the best performing students seem to study alone. They put their phone away, they 
tell their friends and families that they are not going to be able to be reached during that time. And yes, they study for three or four hours per day, but they break that up into a couple of different sessions, typically two or three sessions. So they're not doing a three or four hour studying about all in one shot. So they're managing their time, they're eliminating distractions, and they're studying for a consistent amount of time, at least five days per week, okay? Presumably they're taking some weekends off, although that wasn't made clear from this paper. The other thing that they do, and this is very important, is that they make an effort to then teach their peers, to teach other students in the class. It's very clear that students who make it a point to learn material in isolation, then bring that material to other students in the same course and teach them, perform exceedingly well in comparison to the other students. So don't be afraid to be a teacher of your peers in order to test, this is key, to test and develop mastery of the material. Before I move into specific ways to study in order to maximally offset forgetting, notice I didn't say in order to learn, but rather to maximally offset forgetting, AKA learning, stably learning material. There's one other point that I wanted to pass along from this uh, really nice study on the study habits of highly effective medical students that I've been referring to, and that is, when one examined, or these people were asked about their motivation for studying, the best performing students had an interesting answer. They had a very long-term understanding of how, or belief rather, about how their success in medical school would impact their family, how it would impact their life arc, how it would change them. And they weren't particular about the ways in which it would change them or their family. In fact, it was a rather broad, abstract, aspirational way of thinking about their study efforts. So what I like so much about this paper is that, you know, in addition to having a fairly large sample size, close to 700 students that were evaluated, and yes, it's purely, uh, you know, self-report and this kind of thing, nonetheless, it bridges the two extremes of studying and learning. You know, it gets right down into the nitty gritty of how long they study, when they study, the things they do to limit distraction that we just discussed. But it also gets to their underlying psychological motivations and the thing that they use in order to pull them forward through their study efforts. Perhaps especially when their desire is waning or their uh, level of fatigue is increasing. I don't know that, I'm speculating here. But this is this aspirational component of going to medical school, which it turns out in the country in which this study was done, um, only very, very select few of the very best students are able to achieve that. And they have to learn the information in a different language altogether, which is incredible. Students that I'm referring to in this study are not necessarily constantly thinking about how their efforts will transform themselves and their families, but they certainly were able to report what it was specifically that they are seeking, what they're aspiring to, besides just trying to do as well as they can getting into and through medical school. In the literature, in the peer-reviewed literature about how students can learn information better, it's testing. And I know, I know, I know, we think of tests as a way to evaluate our knowledge, but it turns out that testing is one of the best ways to build our knowledge, to retain our knowledge, and again, to offset forgetting. Now. The study of testing as a learning tool, not just as a way to evaluate how much information we've learned, goes back over a hundred years. There's a classic study that was done in 1917 where grade school age children read biographies. So they read biographies and then the kids were divided into different groups. One group read and reread and reread those biographies over and over. Another group read the biographies once and then were tested on those biographies but get this, they tested themselves on those biographies simply by having to think about the information that they had read and trying to remember the information. Like what was the biography? Who was the person? Who were they married to? What did they do? When did they go to school? What did they do in school? What did they do in the world? What role did they play in life? So they essentially tested their own knowledge simply by going into their own head and asking themselves what they could remember about those biographies. Now keep in mind here that even though it's fairly apparent that reading a biography two, three, four times might seem more passive than testing oneself on a biography that they had read just once, right? You could imagine that thinking about the biography involves more effort, and indeed it does. But keep in mind also that the kids in the second group were only exposed to the biography once. And yet, when you look at 
the percent of accurate recall of information from those biographies. The children that read the biography once and then made a deliberate point to think about that biography in their own mind to effectively test themselves on that material just within their heads over and over, but an equal number of times as the kids that read the biographies directly on a page over and over, vastly outperformed the kids that read the biographies over and over. Put differently, reading and rereading material and re 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 reading material is far less effective than reading material and then thinking about that material, testing yourself on that material, forcing yourself to bring that material to mind in your own mind. And this is not just for sake of remembering more volume of material, but also accuracy of recall of that material. Now, there are other components to learning and neuroplasticity that I've talked about on previous podcasts that are just too interesting not to mention, but I'm just going to mention them in brief, things like gap effects. Gap effects are oh so cool and they've been demonstrated for lots of different forms of learning. Gap effects are what I just did, which is to take periodic pauses in the learning of material as short as five to 10 seconds, but even as long as 30 seconds, during which, guess what? Your hippocampus, the neurons in your hippocampus, repeat information that you've been exposed to for the first time at a rate 20 to 30 times faster than typical, just as it does during rapid eye movement sleep. So if you are a teacher and or if you are a learner, periodically throughout an episode, a class or whatever of trying to learn new motor skills or music skills or whatever kind of learning, pause and let your hippocampus generate more repetitions of that material than it would otherwise if you just tried to barrel through. 